don't go that way. No, don't do it. Uh. You talking to me? If I'm going to become a great artist, I need to go down there. No, don't make my mistake. I spent years finding the perfect supplies and my art is still terrible. So you're telling me that if I find the greatest pen ever made, I won't be able to draw? Uh, basically yes. Well maybe that's just what happened to you, insane old man. <laughs> Oh, pens, pens, I love them. Be patient and you won't regret it. Because I used to look at videos of people drawing and say, what kind of pen is that? And if you have ever said that, well, this is the video for you. So as the title of this video suggests, which pen and pencil is the best? Now... I have to be honest with you. Uh, you have been clickbaited, yes, but this time for your own good. Because I realise that if I title this video honestly, the people that really need to see it would never watch it. The honest video title would probably be more along the lines of stop wasting your time buying art supplies. I'm just going to mess up my nice arrangement here just by playing with them. But don't worry, I will be showing you a few highlights along the way of my favourite pens and mechanical pencils, while I also rant a little. Okay. It all began with this mechanical pencil. Well, mostly. This is the mechanical pencil I've had the longest, which is in my collection. And it is the pencil that I started with when I decided to learn how to draw. And I must say, I did make some pretty good progress with this cheap thing. It was just me, this pencil, and a sketchbook. Very few things to distract me. This sketchbook did take me quite a while to fill because I had a lot of, you know, false starts in my practicing. It's not easy being green. This is uh, from 2011. <laughs> yeah, so life was good. Things were going well. But as I started to make steps towards my goals of skill, I started to become distracted. I started to believe maybe something was, you know, holding me back. Maybe I would be making better progress if I had a better quality pencil. I mean, I don't see other artists drawing of this cheap supermarket bought paper mate pacer. And they can draw a lot better than me. So with that correlation, I came to that conclusion. Even though deep down I knew better. It's really embarrassing how obvious, how wrong that assumption was, you know. But I was snagged by the lure of a shortcut. So I started doing some research for the best mechanical pencil I could buy. And when I say some, I really mean lots I lost count of how many weeks I would spend just looking online at every mechanical pencil I could find because I wanted to make the right choice to propel me to greatness. And eventually I found it. It was the Pentel GraphKeyer 1000. It had every feature I was looking for. A fully retractable lead sleeve. Good grip. A metal outer construction, lead hardness indicator. Now at the time, I couldn't find a single store in Australia that was selling it back in 2015. So I had to buy it from overseas. I don't remember it being cheap. But then also a kind relative who was overseas sent me some more, so that was really nice. So after that pencil buying art creation hiatus, I continued practicing. And was, you know, slowly making progress. Look at that crazy mash of chickens there. Wow. There are some cats. Mm -hmm. Probably drawn with this pencil here with 2B lead. So 
some more head practice. We are now still in the year 2015. Most of these sketchbooks here I filled between the years of 2015 and late 2018. I once filled an entire sketchbook in a month while using this cheap brush pen I bought from that Japanese shop Daiso. You know, some of it's a bit scribbly, completely unplanned most of the time. Quite spontaneous kind of image fragments. There's a squirrel riding on the back of an illy proportioned dinosaur. There's whatever that is. That's actually a pretty good looking dog there. And that there is actually a pretty good looking spark plug down there too. Wow. Yeah, so this here is a drawing here I did from a reference. From a picture I saw online of someone's house barge boat thing made from various different bits and pieces of old reused material. It's pretty cool. It was mostly a lot of practice really. But despite that, you know, I'm still quite happy with it really. I still look at it and go, oh yeah, there's some pretty good drawings in there. That's a real carrot I once found. It was the most ridiculous carrot I've ever seen in my life. It was one, two, three, four, five, six carrots like combined into one somehow and it all coalesced inwards to some kind of center it was a, you never heard of a rat king this was a carrot king that's what it was um, I don't remember actually this being in here Ronald McDonald the great elephant hunter <laughs> what was I think <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> aren't me are you a cannibal? No, no. I'm just using my self-cleaning oven as a free cremation service for the poor. And she's putting a sign that says free gingerbread for children. It's probably one of my more darker comics, I think. Everything up to this point, I think, was done with the brush pen from Daiso. Or da Daiso. I, can't, I can't pronounce anything. Forgive me. And now here I have switched to... The Unipin fine liners. These are excellent fine liners. Can't beat them, just like most fine liners, really. They're mostly all the same. It's very hard to find a fine liner which is slightly worse than the other fine liners, but it is possible. Australian dentists. Nice Rolex. Oh, I mean, cavity. Yeah, so, you know, I'm pretty happy with that sketchbook. Considering how long it took me. Mm, mm, pens, I love them. But then after using this brush pen for a while, I thought to myself, maybe I need a better brush pen. So I kept on buying pens. Look at all the brush pens I have over here now. Oh, they're, they're all basically all full of ink because I just keep on buying more and I don't have a chance to ever actually use ink out of a single one. And then I started making YouTube videos. And I quickly discovered that YouTube doesn't have great rewards for something that's purely original. There has to be something familiar there for people to find, especially when no one knows you as a content creator. So what was I going to do? Purchase even more pens. So now my desire for pens is not only fueled by desire for self-improvement, but also growing my YouTube channel through product reviews people might be searching for. This seemed like a win-win uh, a scenario at first. I get the art supplies that I want, I make a video about it, then I get channel growth, and the cycle continues, with the hope that maybe one day it will be financially self-sustaining. Then I can buy even more pens. It was an art supply merry-go-round, which was lots of fun. Even friends of mine were buying me pens as well. It was fantastic. But was it getting me anywhere artistically? Was I developing? So I had a bit of a review of my sketchbooks down through the years, and I am shocked to say that the product review YouTube merry-go-round was more expensive than I realized. As I've developed 
very little in drawing skill over the past few years. In fact, I wonder if I now am worse than back in 2018. I'm still very happy with the sketchbook I did all the way back then, that I did in a single month. I'm not very happy with some of my most uh, recent ones, even though the last one took me an entire year to fill, because I was basically spending a lot of time just jumping around onto different art supplies and testing them, and, you know, it takes a lot of time. Feel This sketchbook is not 12 times as good. There's a lot of this. You know, this is the sketchbook I started doing YouTubing in, basically. Just ended up being a lot of pen testing with the occasional art piece in between. A whole year. That's basically a page per week, I think. This is the one where I compared fine liners to technical pens. Yes, I've drawn with all sorts of things. I've drawn with fine, cheap fine liners and expensive ones. I've drawn with uh, rotaring isographs. Here's my favourite pack of rotaring micro norms. And also other technical pens as well. Quite a few different kinds of mechanical pencils. Various kinds of brush pens and also paint brushes as well, but I was running out of room on my desk, so I'm not going to show you. I've used expensive markers and I've also used cheap markers as well, and then I discovered that I actually prefer using the cheap ones for some reason. Just easier to work with. I've drawn with cheap and also good quality dip pen nibs. I've even made dip pens out of bamboo and drawn with them. I've set sticks on fire. I have then extinguished them and then drawn with those as well. I've even drawn with a bit of dry grass I have pulled out of the ground by dipping it in a bit of ink. Now, did any of these things that I just mentioned actually help me to improve? No. None of these things helped me draw any better than any other. I always found that I was the bottleneck. Not the tool I was using, even with the dead grass. Now I had almost forgotten I drew this. This is like my uh, my joke of like a Star Wars knockoff, basically. I had all different names for them too, which were jokes on the Star Wars characters. I think this guy here was called Soda. C T P O or something. I can't remember. And that's um, Doctor Insidious. It's uh, Hand Solo because he's only got one hand. And he's friends with a bear. Forgotten the name of the bear. But uh, that's Jabber the Gut, who loves fast food. Excellent product placement opportunities in this movie, I tell you. So if you do find a pen that you switch to does actually enable you to draw better, it probably has to be the worst pen ever made. Why is there a, a chicken man holding a pen here? This chicken man's full of little appendages. Like, uh, this pen here. This pen here is the worst pen ever made. It is a Chinese company called Heroes attempt at a technical pen, and it was shocking. It made me physically ill. It's just so easy to find a pen or pencil that works well and is comfortable enough to hold, you know? Just keep it simple. You just need something good to get the job done. Like a tractor, for example. Not a fancy and expensive all-terrain 4x4. I mean, think about it. If your fancy all-terrain 4x4 gets stuck in the mud, what pulls them out? A tractor. Something that does one thing just really, really well. Because complexity can just add points of failure I mean, let's look at metal pencils versus plastic mechanical pencils, for example. So here's a super affordable plastic mechanical pencil, the Pentel P205. Mm -hmm, feels pretty good. Nice precision instrument. But you might be thinking, plastic? Mm, plastic means cheap. And well, so did I. But then while buying pens and pencils that were made out of better quality metal, I find that the metal is naturally less grippy than even smooth plastic. Like this metal mechanical pencil here, I had to add a um, bit of rubber grip onto it, just so I could hold it. 
So now not only do you want metal, but it also needs to have some really high quality knurling on it to match the grip of even just a cheap plastic pen. And the price just keeps on going up, you know, to no real benefit. So hunting for the best art supplies will not make you a better artist. It will just make your bad art more expensive to make. It's a bit like seeing a rich person driving around in a sports car. But buying a sports car isn't going to make you rich. It's the same story with skilled artists showing off their fancy supplies on some YouTube video. I don't know why all of my analogies have to do with cars. It drives me crazy. So, the best pen or pencil you can have would have to be the one you pay no attention to. You should forget you're even using it. You no, know, just. It's not the pen you don't have, it's the pen you become used to. That is the best pen you can have.